Oh, there we go. Come on, eat it, eat it. Catfish. <laughs> There's a dead tree laying in the water. Great spot. All these dead trees I see sticking up. There's, <laughs> there's that many more underneath <laughs> the surface. More underneath down there. <laughs> Must be hard to find a place where there's not a dead tree. That's correct. Working these deadly combos like this are great for kids too, man, because it's such a visual. And when it's slow, they always got something to look at and they don't get bored. Absolutely. Even for the novice angler. Oh, yep. Yeah, or the pro. <laughs> <laughs> or the pro. <laughs> That's like I said, we use these in Louisiana, man. I swear we absolutely tore the fish up. Won a couple redfish tournaments, placed, you know, in the top five in many of them. Where all the, the dead trees that you see are laying in the water here, they're all a result of Hurricane Wilma that we had here six years ago. And basically, this is where the storm came in. This the was, eye of the storm went right, it was right here? Right here, ground zero. And as a result of that, all these trees are decaying and dying and falling in the water and just creating a natural habitat for the redfish, the snook, the trout. So this is the honey hole right here, huh? This could be the spot right here. Oh, did you see that fish? <laughs> yeah. I have been waiting to hit a mullet in the air when I cast. <laughs> you were real close on that one. <laughs> Those bobbers are great. They make some noise. They kind of draw attention to the bait. I always used to call them tourist rigs. <laughs> the until, dead until, until we won about 200,000 or about 150,000 on these things. The deadly combo. Oh. oh. He's looking for it. He's looking for it. underneath this big orange float. Right? There. There we go. Get him out of there. <laughs> it took him a while to find it, didn't it? <laughs> it sure did. That's a redfish. Any good time in the winter time is a good time to catch a redfish, especially in shorts when everybody up north freezing. <laughs> the middle of December, right? The middle of December. What, we got a week and a half before Christmas? <laughs> yeah. And welcome to this episode of Addictive Fishing. We're down here in the Everglades. Well, you guys are all freezing up north. We're down here in shorts. It rained on us a little bit this morning, but uh, got Captain Brian Sanders with us, otherwise known as the Chuckalusky Kid. We're in the Everglades and we're doing what we can today to catch some fish and show them to you. So we're gonna show you this redfish real quick on what I used to call the tourist rig, otherwise known as the deadly combo. <laughs> and uh, absolutely tore that DOA shrimp up on the deadly combo. Catching redfish in the Everglades. <laughs> Y'all stay tuned. We're gonna be right back with some more addictive fishing right here in the Everglades in the middle of the winter time. Let's go then. Ooh, it's good seeing them little fish in here. I think I have me a, like a redfish. Not a lot of snook. Yeah, how about that? Like a nice quiet spot for them to come up and get warm on this nice December day in the mm -hmm. sunshine. So since snook has taken such a beating here, what's your uh, your predominant fish down here now is redfish? Absolutely. Uh, the theory behind it is, is we had a fish kill here a couple years ago. The water temperature was got down into the 40s for a couple days. The fish just couldn't handle that temperature. Uh, it killed a lot of the snook, a lot of the uh, catfish, a lot of the goliath groupers, a lot of the predator fish. So the theory behind it is, is the redfish are really flourishing because of that, because they, the little fry redfish weren't eaten by any of the predator fish, and they're all growing up. They're all a year or two old now, two and a half years old. This place is alive with redfish right now. A, see, a little snooky. Good to see some snook around, right? Yeah, no kidding. These guys are few and far between down here now. Y'all's winter hit them that bad down here too, huh? It was really bad, Blair. It was it was the most disgusting feeling to see all this dead floating fish. Good to see them that one. That one come in just from the outside, huh? Mm-hmm. Pretty little fish. Silver with yellow fins, look at him. A light colored fish. Fresh in from the deep water. Looks like one of those snook you'd see in that tank at Project Snook, doesn't it? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, those snook are uh, getting, to, getting to be just about that size right there. 
Blair, how long do they keep those snook in the uh, holding tanks there at Project Snook before they release them into the wild? I think it's you know right out about a year to a year and a half. It'll be about you know eight to ten inches long. A little bit. Uh, ooh, there goes a shark right there. Oh, look at that. <laughs> a little bit. They're they're a little bit smaller than the one you just caught. But it's good definitely seeing those. Ooh, there's one. Oh. It's good seeing them little fish in here. I think I have me a like a red snook. Yeah, a lot of snook. Yeah, how about that? Well, there's two in there that made it through. That's good to see. That's our future snook stock right there. Yeah, I'm be real careful with this, dude. Isn't that funny? Now every snook you catch, you really try to bait. Oh, you really bait. Try, <laughs> try to get them back into the water because you're just hoping they're gonna they're gonna make a bunch of babies. Well, that little dude sure like that DOA shrimp. Deadly combo. You can definitely tell when they've been in here just for a little bit. The fins start turning yellow and start getting her a little darker on the back. What a beautiful fish. Get on back, dude. I'll do another one of those. Let's do it. You know, we might not catch the mugging since it's the middle of December, but we can sure show these folks out here how to use these DOA deadly combos and catch some fish. So <laughs> y'all stay tuned, we'll be right back. Got re rigged. Some more addictive fishing. Let's go then. How about right there? Welcome back, folks. You can see our, our conditions are constantly changing, so what we're doing to compensate for that is kind of changing our location every time we get a weather change because the tide keeps coming in, keeps changing our positions. And we're still using the deadly combos. And the reason we're using them is just because you can throw them out there and let them sit and the bait can stay in uh, the same place for a lot longer time. And you just want to give it a rod, just a little bit of a twitch. Now, we used to call this one a tourist rig, but until we won a bunch of money using this in the tournaments, you know, I never really used a popping cork with a rubber bait underneath it. And you really wouldn't think a rubber bait underneath a popping cork, but as you see, it's working and it's working well. How about right there? <laughs> you take a lot of a lot of families out, a lot of kids. Uh huh. What a better way this to. This is a great way to fish. Introduce them into fishing than using one of these deadly combos because it is so visual. What I mean by that, if they get bored sitting there casting or just drowning the bait on the bottom, like we say, oh. you can come out here with these. Mm. Come with Brian. He can tell you right when they're going to hit. Oh, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> What was that? <laughs> oh, that looked like a little school that had pushed in there. That's a decent fish there, Blair. So this is about your average size here? Yeah, that's the average we've been catching, a, a nice 19, 20 inch fish. Now did uh, FWC, I heard that they're gonna try to make it go to two redfish now. It's been proposed, it hasn't been voted on yet, but it's been proposed. All right. If the red fishing, the redfish are that prevalent now, and the snook have, were hurt so hard by the freeze we had a couple years ago. Yeah. I'm all for raising a limit on the redfish and protecting the snook. It's yeah. just gonna preserve the longevity of our fishing here. No kidding, and I redfish this size right here, right at the minimum, the 18 inches, they're so much better to eat anyway. Absolutely. God, that fish's belly's all fat. Tied in coming. See you later, dude. There he is. Oh, that's a good fish, Blair. Let's see if his brother's up in that's there. It's not a bad fish at all right there. So once you find out what point they're going to come in at, you can just sit here and whack them all day, huh? Yeah, it's just, it's so tide orientated here. Once it, you notice how that water started coming in and we anchored on this point and we're fishing this little 75 foot section here. Yep, there's another one, brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mine got off that time. Oh. I don't know where this guy's going. <clears throat> He's trying to go He's back hiding in underneath the boat, isn't water. he? There he is. Nice. Ooh, that's an upper upper size redfish for here, huh? That's a nice nice red there, buddy. Watch that hook. 
Look how red that fish is, huh? Yeah, he's been eating <laughs> Hence good. the name redfish. <laughs> Out in Louisiana, we call them orange pumpkins. Water's real kind of dark, and sometimes it's real dark and clear. It's got a lot of tannic in it, but it's clear, and they look like just pumpkins out there floating in the uh, hydrilla. That's a pretty one. Look at that. His tail's about the same color as that rod. It sure is. <laughs> Now what we've done today, folks, well, as you can see, we're using the, uh, the deadly combos. And what that's doing is imitating shrimp sounds. When that, when that little weight makes that sound as it's clicking, it sounds just like a shrimp, and that's what they're really focused on eating right now. They're up there just rooting around any of this tide, bringing all these shrimp and little tiny crabs in. That's kind of what these fish are con concentrating on. And that's what that uh, deadly combo you know, imitates is the sound of a shrimp down there clicking. And as you see, it's working. How's that beef jerky treating you? Oh, I like it. <laughs> Sticks with you all day long. Start to come in waves. Yeah, the tide's getting up there a little bit now, so. This log's really covered up right here. Oh, little guy. Oh, I just had one too. Oh! Quick release. You just wonder how many, you wonder how many fish are actually coming through here, you know? Get a little wore out. Another one, Blair. Yeah, now that I'm re-rigged with the <laughs> Are you ready? Thing. Boy, that's a scrappy that's one there. Scrappy, yeah. Golly. Oh, hey. He's not real big, but he thinks he is. <laughs> Doesn't he? Oh, he thinks he is. He thinks he is. Still a 20-inch fish. <laughs> yeah, you remember, you got to wonder when the when oh. the hatch of all these fish were, because they're all about the same size. Aren't they? We figure it was two years it had ago. Had to be two years ago, yeah. Yeah, right after that big freeze, it that's, killed most of the predators. That's two-year-old fish. Let that one get off that night. He come right back and pick it up. Came back in 80, didn't he? Yep. <laughs> You know, one thing I'm glad we did today is downsize on these rods because the 7.9 or the 7.6 would have definitely been getting it done a little quick. We downsized to the 7.2 flat sticks here and it uh, makes it a lot more fun when you're catching smaller redfish like this. Yeah, yes, sir. He absolutely loved it. But pretty, whoop, pretty little redfish. Oh, get him! There he is. <laughs> <laughs> thing that is so neat not more than 30 minutes ago right up here where we're casting it was dry land that always amazes me <laughs> but that's why god gives them tails so they can swim up there and get that food right look at all the spots on this guy he's not real big but he's got plenty of spots on him beautiful fish I'll let him go that was a short little window there wasn't it yeah <laughs> all right blair i'm gonna throw in there and see if i can't call one out of there. Oh, what you got? I don't know. Looks like another red. I think so. I got smacked up there at the same time you did. Did you? Boy, there's a pocket of fish there in there, huh? That's amazing. And not more than 30 minutes ago, right up there where they we're catching these there fish. There was no right water. Now, it was zero water. <laughs> you want to land him up here? You land him right there. I'm gonna catch this other one. You're on your own. I'm on my own now? You're on your own. Oh, come on. I want to land so many fish for you. <laughs> that was kind of nice. Look at that. Oh, I'll catch there this he is. one. Huh? Oh yeah, shake that head, baby. How about that fish, Blair? That works real well. Not a bad Let's... fish, huh? <sighs> come on, dude. Spots just one right after the other, right after the other. And that's about your average size reds down here. That's what we've been yeah, getting. Yeah, it's a 20 inch, 21 inch fish. Nice. And they are all healthy down here. Mm. That one's good and healthy. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you think about that one? He's darker. He's a little darker than the rest yeah. of them, isn't he? Pretty fish. Hey, you gotta love it. Hey, y'all stay tuned. We're gonna be right back with some more addictive fishing. The Chuckaluska Kid right here in the Everglades, right in that winter time, right in the middle of winter. Let's go then.
There he is. <laughs> he sucked that thing down, didn't he? Little redfish. Look how he was one under him, too. Rig It Right by Wright and Miguel. On today's Rig It Right segment, I'm going to show you what we were using on today's episode. What we used to call the tourist rig. It's the DOA Deadly Combo. And this one right here happens to have a gold shrimp on it. You can put any type of bait that you want underneath it, whether it be a terrorize, a cow, anything under there. What's attracting those fish is the sound this bobber makes when you pop it through the water. And the flats blue we're throwing out there today was the 7-2, had it rigged up with a 3,000 size reel, 10 pound test fins wind tamer. As you can see, the wind was kind of howling on us, so we we're trying to find any little cubby hole back there we can hide and get out of the wind and catch a lot of redfish. And man, there is a ton of redfish down there in the winter time. Not the biggest ones in the world. That's why we went to the 7-2. Had a lot of fun. So if you ever get a chance to head down to Chuckalusky, I say definitely do so. Remember one thing though, every fishing season starts right here at Dick's. Rig It Right by Wright and Miguel. All right, folks, we're here at Moat Aquaculture Park right outside of Sarasota. You've been asking about Project Snook and how it's going. Let's go check out their new microscope you guys helped pay for. A microscope we were able to purchase this year with the funds that we got from Project Snook and the match from USF is something that has enabled us to move into an area of research where we're looking at the development within the eggs. Even though they're four days old, not only the length, which is just kind of fairly easy to see in that microscope, but we can look at the width, we can look at other formations like the bladder inflation is very important at this age. That can't be done without a good enough microscope and a photographic setup that allows our researchers to get good, hard, solid data back. And uh, so this is all the digestive system right here. And right here, this small little ball, that's a, a bladder. We can actually record everything also. So it's not only taking measurements, snapshots, and also we can video tape their behavior for behavioral studies. This guy's the mag daddy. It used to be a whole day pretty much to do this. And right now, with this microscope, literally it's like half an hour, so. so there's, your, there's your money at work. A new microscope, saving money for Moat Marine, actually saving time, and time's money here. So anything y'all can do to help out Moat Marine, keep doing it. Anybody that hasn't done it yet, you want more Snook, help out Project Snook. Brian, what are we going to be looking at here at this spot? I can see the bottom pretty good. Well, we're just going to work this edge of this bar up here around the corner. Just fish right off the edge of the dark spot. And uh, You think we can catch a redfish here? I think so. There's been just a couple today that we've seen, you know. <laughs> it's, it's getting kind of windy now, so we'll, uh, we'll do our best here. That's a school of bait. There's something messing with it. There it goes. There he is. <laughs> he sucked that thing down, didn't he? Little redfish. Look how it was one under him, too. Yeah, there was one chasing him. Was there? Well, what do you think this wind's going to do to us today, Brian? Keep Especially blowing. Now. Keep blowing. blowing. <laughs> Get a little rougher, a little rougher, a little rougher all the way back? Absolutely. <laughs> well tell you what, it has been a fun day catching a bunch of redfish. If y'all ever want to get a chance to do this, give Brian a call. What's your website? SandersOutdoorGuide.com. SandersOutdoorGuide.com. He'll bring you down here to the Everglades. His name is the Chuckalusky Kid. He can flat put you on the redfish. Brian, as usual, it's an awesome day. No Mogans today, but I tell you, it was action pretty much all day long. Just you got to wait on the tide to get to a certain point. As soon as it does, you gotta put your trust in the guide because if he says they're gonna be there, they're gonna be there. Don't forget about the website, addictedfishing.com. Check us out on Facebook. We got the new uh, Bogan Lounge going on. Post your videos. And we got a new thing coming up with the uh, travel rod too. Should be in full swing here pretty soon. Till next week, we don't know where we're gonna be. Check out more footage from this show by logging on to addictedfishing.com for outtakes and bloopers. Oh! Oh!
Oh. I had your back up right here. <laughs> How about that, huh? Out there today. A black drum, baby.